The Tudors lived in an extremely violent time in British history, and they used violence to maintain the pecking order of the day. Rich men would beat up poor men, titled men would beat up commoners, older men would beat up younger men. But what if you're a man at the very bottom of the pile? Who did you get to pick on? The only place where you were lord and master was in your own home. And after a hard day waiting on his lordship at the castle and being beaten with a stick, the one compensation you had was to knock the living daylights out of your wife. British society's attitudes towards women are constantly changing. In the past, violence towards women wasn't just approved, it was even endorsed. Did you know that the Romans were actually allowed to kill their wives just for drinking alcohol? And the Anglo-Saxons used to cut off their wives' noses and their ears for committing adultery. And the 6th century Christian church told women that getting a thrashing from their man was actually good for them. Because a woman's ability to endure violence was a sign of a virtuous wife and a good Christian. So all you had to do was to get beaten up by your husband, not complain about it, and you could go to heaven. Women didn't get much better treatment from the state either. When Henry II came to power in 1154, he created, for the first time ever, a formal legal system for Britain. The common law was written for the people, stating that legally a man's wife was his possession. Men had the right to beat their wives, so long as they did it what was called moderately and reasonably, which actually meant that basically you could do anything you wanted to her, as long as you didn't murder her. That was a crime. And if a woman complained about this state of affairs, she didn't get very far. In 1396, in York, a poor woman called Margaret Neffield decided to attempt the rare and brave step of dissolving her marriage on the grounds of cruelty. And although her husband Thomas did admit that, yes, yes, he had beaten her up <coughs> rather a lot, and, and yes, yes, he had broken her arm, <coughs> And yes, yes, he had slashed her around a bit, well, a lot, with a knife and, and, and things. But the court decided that, no, Margaret did not have a case. She didn't have a case. And not only that, the court advised Thomas to beat her up even more, <coughs> to correct her faults. <coughs> when women complained about violence, they got no protection from the law. And medieval man had some very clever devices and contraptions up his sleeve to keep a woman in her place. But there are some members of our society who have had more than their fair share of a good kicking. Take the position of women in the Middle Ages. The state gave each village the authority to punish women who didn't toe the line. Any woman who gossiped too much, any woman who nagged too much, any woman who caused trouble, or really any unpopular woman could be punished for any reason they felt like. And this person was known as a scold. A scold was a troublesome and angry woman who by her wrangling amongst her neighbours doth break the public peace and beget, cherish and increase public discord. These days, of course, we put women like that on daytime discussion shows. But in those days, they put their head inside one of these. The Scold's Bridle. The Scold's Bridle was first seen in Edinburgh in 1567, but it soon spread south over the border. Basically, it was an iron frame which fitted onto the unpopular woman's head and was padlocked on the back, so only the key holder could get it off. It had a piece of iron called a tongue which rammed into the mouth and stopped the woman talking. And once the scold's bridle was on, are you ready, Christy? Christy Colley is an amateur historian from Lempster, and she's volunteered to play the role of my nagging wife to get the feel of what it was really like for medieval women. The woman was then paraded around the town so that all the townsfolk could see how bad she was. Often, the charge of being a scold was actually brought by the woman's husband. It was a perfect way to humiliate her into submission and boost his own image at the same time. Sometimes, she was chained to a hook outside her house, someone else's house, 
the pub. Anywhere, really, so that all the town could show their disapproval. And in fact, the crime of being a scold was only abolished in 1967. There. <laughs> Do you enjoy that? What did it feel like? It's very humiliating. I couldn't speak, my jaw aches, my teeth are numb. My head feels heavy from the weight of the thing. Yeah. And just, uh, I gave up wanting to speak because no one could understand me, so I just gave up in the end. So it, it kind of it did its job? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It, it shut someone up and made them feel... Taming the shrew. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think it must have felt like to be, a, to be a medieval lady wandering around like that? I wouldn't expect to uh, be treated as well as I have today. What do you mean? Well, I've heard that they've treated, they were treated badly. And this is an original? This is one of the more pleasant ones, though. Yeah? Yeah, it's very, very uncomfortable, but I've seen much more... For, uh, worse varieties than this. Like what? Uh, the spikes through the tongue is pretty horrendous. To? To serrate the tongue, basically, so they couldn't speak to form the tongue. They couldn't speak. So if they tried to speak, it's <laughs> cut the tongue, yeah. roof of the mouth. Yeah. Jeez. Nasty stuff. So there were spikes on the tongue, and there other bits of spikes around here, too. Yeah, more often than not, the, the face was almost fully covered. Yeah. Apart from the eyes. I found it difficult to see in front of me because of this. Yeah. But often they had spikes at either side, so they cut the neck or they couldn't lie down. Or find any comfort. This is serious. This is not funny. If they survived at all. How do you mean? They were often beaten and berated, smeared with poo. People threw slops over them through town. It was really a big, yeah. a big thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. They put one of these on. They might rip their tongue. They tie them to a wall and smear excrement on them. Beat them. Beat them. If they survived the, uh, the dragging through town, they probably wouldn't survive the beating. Often like... fatal. I think probably dogs were given a better deal than women back then. Well, possibly so. Yeah. <laughs>